Yeah, that's it. We, we, we are not here for for fashion. We're here for passion. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. wow. Your yeah, no, that's my hardcore way. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Belton Jasper. If this is your first time on the channel, hit subscribe right now. Burning Witches is taking the metal world by storm and they've got a brand new album coming out in just a few days called Witch of the North. I had a chance to speak to singer Laura, drummer Lala, and guitar player Larissa to learn all about the new album. We've seen a lot of bands either postpone releases, um, you know, uh, to not release anything during the pandemic, or we've seen bands that released an album like uh, Burning Witches relatively close before the pandemic hit, and then trying to do everything they can to keep that album alive so they can tour that later. You guys did the complete opposite, and you just went like, you know what, we're gonna release another album uh, for you guys in roughly a year uh, later. Um, what what was the reason behind that decision? Well, one reason is that Ramana, our main songwriter, and um, she has such a lot of ideas for for really good guitar riffs uh, that we could write an album at least every week or something. Yeah, and uh, we don't have uh, anything else to do during pandemic, so we thought to ourselves that uh, yeah, come on, let's make a new album because nothing else to do. We don't have shows, we don't have anything. Just boring, so yeah. At least then there's something you can give to the fans. Mm -hmm. It is a bit early, but yeah. And I mean, it shouldn't have been any earlier, I think also, but yeah, it's been really nice. I mean, the album is really now the only reason why I'm still actually seeing the band because I always have to travel there. I'm the only one that doesn't live in Brugge in Switzerland. I'm living in the Netherlands. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so yeah, for me it's also definitely nice because then I get to see the rest of the band. <laughs> Should the fans expect you to promote both albums equally because the fans have never really seen you tour the previous album? Or is the focus going to be more on Witch of the North? We usually, if we play, we usually mix songs. Since uh, Dance with the Devil, we didn't have chance to promote the, the album. We only have one show after then, so maybe the best thing we can do is we can mix something. Uh, songs from Dance with the Devil and from the from the new album Wish of the North so that the fans can can still experience what 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 is that in life. Yeah. Yeah. Personally I'm not I'm not just as we say in North America, blowing smoke up your ass. Uh, but I do think that uh, the new album is the strongest album of the band so far. I am still kind of going back and forth between We Stand As One or Nine Worlds, Flight of the Valkyries. I'm not quite sure yet which is my favorite track. I do like the, you know, the, the Man of War vibe in We Stand As One a little bit. Um, what can, is, is it still too close for you guys? Or, or do you already have an idea of like, this is my favorite song or a song that I can't wait to play live? Yeah, we used to practice now with Stand As One, Light of the Valkyries. And the, actually we have really, everybody of us has their own favorites. So, but the, the, the thing is, we only have this time for live show and we cannot, come on girls, we only have these 50 minutes to play. We cannot play everything there. So we have to choose the best song for us and the best song for the fans. Yeah. And we think uh, we stand this one is one of the candidates for uh, in, in live show, playing yeah. in live show, because it's uh, kind of like a hit. You just like it lyrically and um, musically, it's just like so powerful. Mm -hmm. it's just Imagine yourself that you're there in live and singing that song and we stand this one all together. Yeah, it's about this, this worldwide metal family. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a funny story when when this song was written, we were in the, in the rehearsal room and yeah. Nora wrote to us, hey, can you write all the stuff that comes to your mind about uh, metal and concerts and this, this, yeah, this family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we said some stuff and she made a really great song about it. Yeah, actually, I was really inspired by uh, Ice to Earth also. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but I also really love Nine Worlds. And, and that's because it is kind of a surprising song, but the, mm -hmm. the choruses are very catchy, though. 
Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, before Nine Worlds uh, happens, we have, um, uh, let's call it an interlude called Omen, with a bunch of spoken mm. word, which ends with the words, it seems, Nine world, Worlds Fall. But yeah. can you share a little bit about, about, about what is being said? Yes, yeah, we, um, we did that on purpose, of course, obviously. <laughs> anyway. I mean, it's like a story-like thing, right? So you kind of get in the vibe like, oh, something's going to happen because it's called Omen, you know? And you hear people whispering and they're druids or witches, you know, that can kind of see into the future because um, we actually started the whole album with Witch of the North. Okay. Um, and and because of this we also took the Norse theme and the mythology from the Vikings and you always have uh, you can also hear a crow and those were of course the sign that something bad is going to happen also like the you know so basically you can hear something's going to happen <laughs> and, uh, yeah that that's uh, the vibe we're going for and then you get nine worlds like a uh, Ragnarok actually right it's kind of a tradition almost that we on every album we have some witches making enchantments or weird noises you know <laughs> so <laughs> we thought this was a good point to have this bad omen as, as a bad sign and basically what's happening is this guy or girl witch you know throws the runes on the ground and and reads the future here and comes to the clu conclusion that nine worlds are going to fall yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah. the that's the Getting into a trance and uh, making a really awful prediction there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of different influences, and I think maybe on this album more than before. Um, I know that, that there tend to be very main songwriters, but we have some new members in the band now as well with Larissa. Uh, do you agree that this is that this is quite a diverse album? And where do all these influences come from? And was um, Larissa, did you have a chance to contribute a little bit of your own uh, influences to the sound? Well, I, I agree, yeah. I also think and hope it is a diverse album. In general, I th think also it's a bit uh, more heavy or like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, the thing mm -hmm. is, um, it's like from the beginning it was um, that Romana, yes, as I said before, the main songwriter, she has all the ideas for riffs and uh, then she goes to the rehearsal room um, in the start with you, yeah? Yeah, and yeah. And jam together and then Jay comes with the bass line and yeah, I had uh, many chances to contribute melodies and uh, lead guitar solos mm -hmm. and then we send it to Laura yeah and, and Laura she, will make the lyrics then yeah, and send exactly. it back to us and uh, we yeah. to Switzerland yeah it works yeah, yeah. and then yeah she will come to Switzerland yeah. we will do a band uh, session yeah, yeah. that's that's uh, that's how we make songs but usually Romana makes me scared all the time <laughs> I, after releasing the album, hey Lala, what can you think about this thing? And then I said, hey, come on, we still don't. We still just uh, release an album and then you have songs already. <laughs> she always makes me, oh, come on, let's go to the band room and we can jump together. Let's see what, what, what will gonna be with the song, what can we do with it. Yeah. That's it. And at the end of the day, we, we already have six or five songs. Yeah. So in other words, uh, before you guys get the tour, there's going to be two more albums from Burning, which is released. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Now, you mentioned uh, as one of, you know, your inspirations, maybe, or influences for this album, uh, Iced Earth. Uh, I think, yeah, definitely we can hear, and I would say both, uh, um, I mean, Iced Earth had obviously multiple uh, well-known singers uh, with, with Matt Barlow as well, but um, I would say more the Helfordian Ripper screams and also, you know, oh. your cha challenging Stu Block there at times as well, I find. <laughs> um, I think that's because I have a light voice, because actually my main, I love Barlow. I really love the way he, uh, yeah, yeah. he songwrites and, and the, you know, the melancholy, but I, there's just no way I can because my voice is not that low, you know. I kind of try <laughs> to approach it a little bit because I liked it. A lot. It's one of my favorite singers. Yeah. I feel like I'm always in development or something. I always like right. to try new things. So I'm just this kind of vocalist that likes to try, 
you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 no, for sure, for sure. I mean, um, you're clearly not afraid to try new things. People in the Netherlands, uh, where, where a lot of people were introduced to you when you uh, partook in the uh, in the idols competition, I think it was in 2016 on Dutch yeah, TV. Yeah. I remember a lot of people reacting at first, like, oh, first of all, she seems either too cute for metal, but she's too scary for pop. Is that something that... <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah is, is that something that, you know, it's something that a lot of people uh, in, in, in the alternative world, let's call it, have to deal with, with, you know, instant judgment based on, you know, how people look or what have you, and people don't think that you look a certain role. Is that something that you still see a lot today, or is that is that situation better for you now that you are with Burning Witches for a few years? I was like, you know what, I'm going to use that I'm a little bit special too, you know? So I did add in a lot of distortion while I was singing, more than, mm -hmm. you know, for the, the most people would do probably. And <laughs> it was kind of funny because I was in the, you know, um, in the last 20 persons, and the last 20 went to Indonesia, to Bali, yeah. and <laughs> we were on this island, and one of the things I heard uh, at some point were like, Wow, we can hear her all across the island. She's like yelling so loud. <laughs> the first picture, I guess, what I was announced with was the total resting bitch face, you know what I mean? And, uh, and leather clothes with spikes and... I, I mean, I also like these, these clothes already, so I, one of the reasons why they really liked me to audition, uh, by the way, is because I already had this style. And the stage gear that, for some reason, is it, is it still the best way for you to, to, to build your own outfits by using old pizza boxes? Ah, <laughs> yeah, I, I once did that, but that was because I was working with Warbla with this uh, cosplay material, You, I would say. Uh, they use it because it's basically pieces of plastic that you can heat up and then you can form them to whatever shape you want. Um, so, no, not at the moment. Basically what I do <laughs> mostly now is I just get some uh, basic clothes. I seriously got some pants from the Lidl. So just a supermarket and they had leggings, you know, leather leggings lying around and they were cheap and they, on one side, they were from fabric instead of the leather. And I love that because I sweat a lot on stage. So I yeah, immediately yeah. bought two of them <laughs> and then I just put a few studs through them, you know, and then it looks cool and it's not and it's cheap, so yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. She is so artistic. She yeah, can. really, she is. If we, we ask for something like, hey, Laura, this is, is this, you think that this is a nice jacket? Oh, yeah, I think so. And then we believe in her because she she's the one, she's the, she's, she can wear and almost anything. Mm -hmm. And she has a great body. Uh, yeah. And she looks good. I can imagine that there's a lot of people uh, their initial reaction who don't really take their time to understand the band will, you know, look at you guys like this and go like, all right, prove to me that you're actual metalheads. Um, is that something that happens a lot or do you win over the crowd pretty easily? Yeah, I think in the yeah, beginning, exactly. sometimes there are people who say, oh, are they really playing them by themselves? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, now, since I'm in the band, I didn't experience that yeah but at the beginning we ha we have a hard time because uh, we release a demo and then people thought that uh, we are not the one who recorded it yeah. and yeah. they yeah. thought some some people thought that we are a joke or trying to be pretty or trying to be sexy that's it where you're just female you cannot play mm -hmm. and then after releasing that demo it was recognized by uh, metal hammer and rock hearts so that's the start and we get hooked with nuclear blast and we have a lot of shows, big shows, small shows. And then maybe people just realize, okay, oh yeah, maybe, yeah they, they can do they can do good music and then maybe they realize that it doesn't matter yeah. about gender. I mean the gender doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Because we're here just to play, we're here, we're here to have fun, to do our passion, have a good time. Yeah, that's it. We, we we are not here for for fashion. We're here for fashion. Oh <laughs> wow! Yeah, yeah. Wow! Wow! Your way. Yeah, no, that's my hardcore way. You know. <laughs>
uh, we've seen a few videos now. The album is going to come out soon. Um, is there anything else that the fans should be aware of? Are, what, are you, what else are you doing to promote the album? Mm, yeah, we hopefully we can tour with Primal Fear. Yeah, on September and continue yeah. it on January next year. But if things get worse, perhaps we can we can do yeah, live streaming because we don't have any option to promote the album, right? That's the only thing we can do. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps we can do live streaming or some yeah. more videos. Some more videos, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then two more albums and you know, <laughs> another album and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Until next year and uh, another album again. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful evening or late afternoon. No worries, and... I'm having fun. <laughs> awesome. I can't wait for all the fans to discover the full album because I really think it's really great. Thank you thank so you. much. Such a pleasure to talk yeah. to you, Jasper. Thanks. See you later. You are awesome for watching this video, click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.